Hey guys, how's it going? So in the last part of Let's Build the App Store, um, we came across this one part where we couldn't page through the images on top and I really wanted to add that in. So this part is going to explain how we can get that paging going on. So let's go ahead, open up the internet here. And there's this one framework that I found that is actually super useful. And it really, I wish Apple would just build it right in because it just makes a whole lot of sense to me. No. So it's, just, so it's from this one guy called Nacho and he made this one framework here called Pages. It's a lightweight paging solution for Swift UI. Um, and I really think it's genius and I wish that Apple would implement it right into the application. So in order to get this into the application, all we need to do is go back to our, our project here and we're going to say file Swift packages and add a package de dependency here. Then with this dependency and you're just going to grab this URL right here and plunk that right in. I already have it in there, so I'm not going to worry about that. But once you go through the install process, you'll see the Swift package dependencies right down here. So now that we have this in here, let's go ahead and try using it. So the way that I'm using it right now is we have our games page. If we were to load this up, what do you mean you're encountering an unexpected AOR? Doesn't make any sense. You know, Swift UI and its previews, it's not always the greatest. It gives you false hope at times. So as you can see inside of our application right now, we have like a scroll view that's handling everything. Now with a UI scroll view, you can easily just say dot padding, but in this case, you can't do it. So that's why we needed this solution here, the pages. Um, but if you can see in our games page, we want to be like paging through these top bar things, but it just scrolls. So with this package that we just imported, it makes things a whole, whole lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and say import pages in the which instead of having a scroll view here, we're gonna just take that right out. We're gonna have pages in the which we're gonna say the current page is binding to a number. So for this current page, I'm gonna say at state var uh, current page will be equal to zero. And we're gonna bind that to this one. So dollar sign current page in the which we're gonna put some pages in there. Now we want to take all of these out of the H stack because it's going to be an H stack anyway. And we're just going to plunk those right in there. And now if we were to resume, you can clearly see that we have this up here. Now this is definitely way too small. So this is where I need to mess with the frame of the pages. So I can just go in here, say the width is, we're not worrying about the width. <laughs> and then for the height, we're just going to say this like 350, I think. And then we're going to center it. All right, that looks a little bit too big now. So maybe 300. And yeah, now we have like that top view and we can just scroll through. Now, if we don't, I don't like these dots here and they don't have those dots in the app store. So what I'm going to do is at the, when we're building these pages, we also have this variable called has control and I'm gonna set that to false. And you can see all of like the, the editing stuff if you want to, if you just open up pages and then you can see like all of these things here, the current page, the orientation, if you want to mess with that, and that all works. Now we should have those going through. So here, as you can see, now we have like the paging going on perfectly with the top part. Now also the bottom part does pay, should page as well, but I'm not finding a way that we can use this framework to make paging happen down there. I will do some research and try to make that work as well. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and try editing the like the the design of this part down here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go down here, we're gonna go to the game cell, and we're gonna edit it up here. So with the font here, I'm gonna go ahead and say font dot system font of size, in which this is going to be, I think like 20, or something like that. And I also feel like we do need to have our icon a little bit bigger. It just looks a little bit too small. So I'm feeling maybe 70 by 70 so that it sticks out a little bit more on the page. Maybe a little less, but we can mess with the corner radius as well. And I, that should make it look a little bit better. I feel like that's all right. And so also with the width, I want to make this width like 400. That way it reaches almost all the way out to the edge of the screen. All right. So now that we have that, um, we're also going to make this other text right here, the subtitle. So I'm going to go ahead and say font dot subtitle or subheadline, I guess. And then we also want to change the foreground color of this to gray. 
and that makes it look uh, pretty much like how they have it in the app. Now, the other thing I want is at the top, um, as we can see in the app here, at the top, it also has like what to play this week and then a little sub headline and then see all. And then we also have like the get button. And so we all need, we need to program all of that in as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's put in a couple texts here. Um, this is going to say games to play this week. Oh, this should actually, <laughs> Wrong place. <laughs> this goes inside of a V stack that we're gonna put everything into. And then up here, we're gonna put an H stack and then a V stack inside of that because we have two texts, the, the title, and then we also have the sub headline. And then at the end here, we're gonna put a spacer and we're going to add a button. And this button is going to have an action that's just gonna say, see all. So we're going to say func see all, open close parentheses, and boom. Now with this, we have the action self.see all, and then the label is going to be text see all. And I just realized I'm totally putting this in the wrong place. This shouldn't go in this, the game cell. What am I thinking? We need to take this out of the game cell, and we need to put this up here instead of the B stack here. In, inside of our body there <laughs> okay so now we need to move the function over to this side this v stack doesn't exist anymore and boom and now we can see like our titles so now let's make them titles so this is first going to be of the font of dot title and then this is going to also be bold all right, now that title is a little bit too big in my opinion, so I would say font dot system font of size maybe like 25. Yeah, that looks that seems about right to me. And then for this bottom one, we also want the font to change a little bit. So this is going to be font uh, dot caption. It's just a tiny little thing at the bottom there. And this one doesn't say games to play this week. It says selected by the editors. So now also with this, these are all to the left. So we need to go into our V stack and we're going to say dot leading. Erase the rest of this junk here. And there we go. Now we need to add some padding onto this, onto our H stack here. That way it's not all touching the edges. And there you have it. That looks pretty good to me. Um, it does, this caption is in gray though. So I'm gonna go ahead and say dot foreground color will be equal to gray. Nice. So in order to get that get button, we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna add a spacer here. And then this is going to be a V stack in the which we're going to add a button. And this button is going to call an action called get. So func get. So self dot get. And then the label here is going to be just some text that says get. Let's see if we can see that inside of here right now. So now we do have that get button over there. Now the other thing is another text down below that says in app purchases. Almost all the apps nowadays have in app purchases, so we just gotta program that in. Now, if you wanted it to be like this text is optional, whether it's gonna be there or not, um, it's pretty simple to do. We could just say var has in app purchases will be a bool value and we'll make it equal to true by default, but someone can edit it if not. And then we can just say in here, if has in app purchases is equal equal to true, then we'll show this text. If not, then we won't. And so now if we were to resume here, you can see that there. But if I were to switch this to false, it's gone. So that's just something to think about. So let's make that true for the moment. And then also with this, this text is super tiny. It's it's very small. So we're gonna go ahead and say font dot system font of size. And we'll make this like 10, probably even smaller than that. And then we're gonna say the, the foreground color will be equal to gray. And now we have this tiny in-app purchases there. Now between the button and 
the in-app purchase, we want a little bit of spacing. So I'm going to go ahead and say spacing will be equal to maybe 10. Uh, it's probably smaller than that, like five. And that adds a tiny bit of spacing between the get button and the in-app purchase. Now with this get button, this is something normal that you'll see. It has like a corner radius around it. So what we need to do is add a, a little barrier going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and say add some padding here. And we're going to add some edge insets. In the which for the top, we're going to make it like three maybe. For the leading, this is going to be around 20. Bottom three, trailing 20. And I, I mean, honestly, even bigger than that because they like, they like their buttons big. And for this, we can say dot background will be equal to color dot gray. And then we can change the opacity to make it a little less like gray. We want light gray. So this is going to be 0 0.2 maybe, just a nice, eh, 0 0.3 I think. Just a nice gray. And then we want to add a corner radius. So let's add a corner radius of like 10. It seems like we need more, 15. It's a whole lot of guesswork sometimes, but there you go. Now that looks a little bit more like the games page that we, that we have going on inside of our application. I feel like that icon's too big now that I edited it. Yeah, you can mess around with the numbers, everything as we go along with this. Yeah, that icon's definitely too big. So let's make it 60. And 60 by 60 is a normal image size, so that would make sense. And then for all for this like subheadline here, I feel like that's too big. So I would actually make it like system of size 15. And that way it's a it's a smaller subheadline. And that looks a little bit better to me. And let's make the width a tiny bit smaller because we don't want it reaching all the way. We want to be able to see a tiny bit on the edge there. So I'm thinking 370. And now we can see like a tiny little bit of the, the next icons right next to it. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay. So now another thing I wanted to do real quick is we want there to be like multiple of these games to play. I'm going to put this inside of a for each statement in which it's just going to say zero dot dot less than three. And then our content is going to be the horizontal scroll view here in the which I want there to be, yeah, like three or four of these things going on. And yeah, so that's kind of like what I had in mind for the games view. There's still a couple things that I want to do for the games view, but this is a good base starting point and I think it looks pretty good. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. Um, I'm trying to find like that good balance between the, the beginner stuff, the intermediate stuff, and the expert stuff. This right here is definitely more of like the beginners. They would come here and they would want to learn how to do things. Whereas the experts just want like a piece of code that they can use in their app real quick, get it done. So I'm hoping that I can strike that good balance between it all. So hopefully you guys found this enjoyable. Um, and if you have any suggestions or any comments, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.